from Canada also. Before I have a question, I have to say, you should go to Montreal and Vancouver as well as Toronto. Um, I would love to. <laughs> I wrote for a magazine in Montreal, so I'm gonna review your album. Oh, please be um, nice. <laughs> 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 but I'm a big fan, so it's a bit biased. Um, I just wanted to know what's been your best and worst parts of this whole album journey so far, because obviously, been all over America and all these other things. I don't know. Clearly, you want to build your global empire. So, mm. um, what's been the best and worst bit so far? The best bit has probably been um, getting to travel and the reaction from people. Um, because I literally, like, genuinely had no expectations when I put this out. I just wanted to make an album that I loved. That was it. My manager will tell you that. She's like, no, you want an album that people listen to. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to make an album that I like. Um, so that, like, anything that's happened, like, there's so many things, great, amazing things that have happened that I'm still in disbelief, like the billboard in Times Square or, like, the Spotify collab or touring America. Like, even just getting to go to America was exciting. My parents have never been to America. So the fact I've been around it is, like, crazy to us. Uh, hopefully they'll come out this year at some point. Um, but yeah, just traveling has been amazing and hearing like you guys sending me messages online saying, I love this song or this, song's mean, this song means this to me. Um, so yeah, all that's been great. The worst part was probably um, starting off making it when I felt like nobody really wanted to work with me. Uh, and that was really upsetting, but I totally get it. Um, but I think I needed that to sort of drive me on to learn production and push myself to write by myself, which I love doing. Um, and also just sort of hustle a bit. So yeah, it's, it's made me work a lot harder. Thanks for your question. Hello, Nina. Hello. Um, the album fabulous. Thank so you. Uh, I can't wait for my blue vinyl when it finally arrives. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a question about an old song, um, mm -hmm. which is a fabulous song called um, Other People's Things. Yes. Uh, um, and it's no secret that the, the best three songs on the, the Shires, my universe album, are co written by mm -hmm. M. Nesbitt. Oh, well, thank you. That's, uh, but that's I, a very I, kind I, I wouldn't, of you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell them that, though. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I'm just interested to know how you how you wrote those songs. I mean, did you do the lyrics and Ben do the melodies, or did you do it together? Or you know, um, we pretty much did that song together. Uh, Ben's an amazing writer. Uh, I've never actually written with Chrissy, but I know she's an amazing writer in her own right as well. And um, I came across the Shires after their first album album had come out, and I just messaged them and said, "Love your music." Twitter is just great, by the way, because <laughs> I feel like so many of my sessions have come from social media. And he was like, oh, would you fancy writing? We're writing a new record. And we just got into a room. Uh, he's a great piano player. So he put the chords down, and we just wrote the song together. And I think me and Ben are both really interested in lyrics. And I think that's why I love country music so much, because it's all about the story and the lyric. Um, so yeah, we, we thought like, oh, it's just like a nice song. And then people seemed to love the song and took like different um, meanings from it as well, which was really cool. So I loved working with them, for sure. Do some more. I will. We're, cool. I actually met his manager two days ago and he was like, please, will you write with Ben? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so we, are, we will, definitely. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, so just let you know, I discovered your music at the gym. Great. I didn't know it was you, but I wrote down some of the lyrics, Googled you, and discovered you that way. Love so that. There you go. Um, what is your favourite or favourite songs that you didn't write by other people? Uh, just like in the world. Yeah. I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston, <laughs> obviously. Um, I recently watched a Dolly Parton documentary on Sky Arts. And I was having a very middle-aged day in my house <laughs> watching Sky Arts. And um, it was like a song by song thing. And I'd always liked Dolly Parton, thought she was amazing, but I didn't really know how 
talented she was. Uh, and she wrote Jolene and I Will Always Love You in one night alone, which is terrifying and distressing. <laughs> um, what a night. And inspiring. What a night. Yeah. What a night. So, um, yeah, I would say I Will Always Love You. I'm very inspired by Dolly. I think she's an amazing singer-songwriter and the fact she writes so many on her own and is like this savage businesswoman. I'm like, I love you. Um, so that song... Someone Like You by Adele. I love a power ballad. But I would also like to have Adele's voice to sing that song. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, and yeah, those two. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Hi. Um, so I've been listening to your music since I was about 14. And one of the first things I thought was, wow, this is like the Scottish Taylor Swift. Like, oh. Actually, that was my first thought. <laughs> so I wanted to know, what is your favorite Taylor Swift song? All Too Well. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I went to see her on the Red Tour. Same. Uh, it's the only time I've seen her live, and I cried. I was, like, bawling <laughs> my eyes out. And uh, I went with one of my friends, and she was like, you all right? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me, don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so would you like how much of this whole aesthetic like today was you and can you like talk us through it if it was uh, if it wasn't then really like sorry coming up with the visuals it. for the album or like actually this? like i mean in general because obviously it's the whole theme for the album yeah uh well i from an early point knew that i wanted to have the lotus as my logo because um i felt like it represented the journey of the album which is um, it's a flower that grows in the water in like really dark, murky waters and slowly grows and grows and grows and nobody hears it or sees it. And then one day it just blooms into this beautiful flower, which I kind of felt like the journey that the album took me on was just like, oh, fuck, I'm off to America. This is amazing. <laughs> People are listening to the songs and streaming. And um, yeah, so I knew that I wanted that to be the logo. And then the fact that I just loved water so much. I don't know why. I only drink water. And vodka, and <laughs> I uh, I love being by the water. I love being in water. I love baths. I love the sea. Like I just love water. So um, <laughs> just love water. Um, I knew that I wanted to have them together, and I originally wanted the artwork to be me under the water, fully submerged, with lotuses above it, and that was supposed to represent that the world is always beautiful, but you don't always see it. Um, and we shot that artwork in the paddling pool and the label were like, we can't see your face. We can't market you. And I was like, yeah, good point. And then I was like, do you know what? It's a bit depressing. I look like I'm drowning. So um, maybe I should put my face in it. So I uh, ended up making it a bit more of a color, colorful thing. Like I'd emerged from the water and that's sort of reminding people that you can see it again. Uh, so yeah, that came about and then all that came about in my head on Pinterest. I was looking at a lot of Pinterest pages <laughs> and uh, I had like a little mood board in my room. And then I seen the Gucci Bloom advert. I don't know if you've seen it. Where, is it Dakota Johnson, the actress? She's in this, in this like lake with like loads of flowers. And I was like, that is what I want. <laughs> a lot of people think it's Harry Styles. Everyone's like, <laughs> Harry Styles impact. And I'm like, it's Gucci Bloom. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love Harry Styles. But uh, yeah, so Pinterest and Gucci Bloom. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been a fan for quite a long time and it's been fascinating to watch the development of you and your music over the years. How do you now look back on your early career and are there any like songs or, or parts of that you kind of just cringe and <laughs> wish? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, someone actually asked me this earlier. I was doing some interviews. Um, I think it's like any teenager, you experiment and you do things that, you know, you probably aren't going to look back on when you're 24 and be like, that's great. Um, so there's definitely, like, things that I've put out that I'm like, oh. Mm -hmm. But I kind of like that it's there. It's like it shows the evolution and it shows the change and the growth, I think. And I think it's like a really beautiful moment in time where I had no idea what I was doing and all these amazing opportunities were sort of coming my way. I'd just left school and 
I think it's a really nice thing to look back on and be like, oh, I'm so grateful for all of that. And to have put that album out and had that opportunity, even though some of the songs I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think that could have been like maybe slightly better there, but I think that's where I was at that time. And it sort of shows that and it's given me like a springboard to keep hopefully improving and learning more for sure. Is there any song in particular that you'd like to kind of, which you just wish people would leave in the past? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should say it, because I feel like it's not very nice to say it. Selfies. <laughs> I don't know, it was just like, it was really fun at the time, but what I learned from that song, I don't actually think the song's bad, it's just like, it was supposed to be ironic, like the taking pictures of myself, all I wanted was to be adored. It was like a joke on like current social things and everyone's like, why are you taking pictures of yourself? And I'm like, no, it's not about that. <laughs> um, but what I've learned is that like, jokes sometimes don't come across in songs. So I've stopped doing that now. <laughs> it's Georgia. It's in her um, LS top. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, so you have some great breakup songs, but what is your go-to breakup song? Oh. I think it would be, at the moment, If Mike Dumped Me Tomorrow, yeah. Ariana Grande, like, thank you, next. What a song. What a song, by the way. Amazing yeah. song. It's like sassy and savage, but it's also like positive. Yeah, like it's like, I've learned. I'm grateful for you, I'm moving on, sort of thing. I like that. <laughs> it's not bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're moving above it. I love that, sassy and savage. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. It isn't is, it? isn't it? <laughs> it's a great song. Well, Nina, thank you so much for sharing your thank album you. with us. We've absolutely loved it, guys, haven't we? Thanks. It is just... <laughs> You should be so proud of it. We, we have loved um, sharing time with you. So thank you so much. Thank and, you. And um, to you guys, Nina's going to...